Hey guys, welcome back. Before we can start working on our combat abilities, we need something to attack and some way to provide visual feedback of those attacks. In this video, we will configure the floating combat text system in the Hubworld MMO example project to provide that visual feedback. Here are the features the floating combat text system currently supports. We can control the text size with a float curve asset to control the size over time. We can also control the text alpha over time with a float curve, and we can control the vertical position with a float curve asset as well. We have one set of settings for normal damage and another set of settings for critical damage so that we can tune each one separately. There are settings for color, drop shadow color, and drop shadow offset. In the future, we'll add more features, but this is enough for us to get started. Let's jump in the project and look where we can configure those settings. We'll go to the BP folder, open up the HUD, and you can see here that there's a BP underscore HUD. This inherits from the HW HUD, which is the Hub World HUD class that we'll take a look at a little bit later. And you can see here that there are uh, two methods. We have render floating damage, which comes from the C++, and we have clean up floating damage items. Clean up floating damage items runs on tick to get rid of any old items that we don't need. And inside our event receive draw HUD, we have this render floating damage. Now, over here in our class defaults, we have the settings. This first section here is for the floating damage. This is normal damage. And then here we have floating critical damage. You'll notice there is a section for healing and critical healing, but we don't have those hooked up yet. So I'm gonna go through the settings real fast here. They're the same for both. So we'll just go through it on the normal damage. The way that some of these settings work is that by adding a curve, you override another simpler feature. So you can see here that we have floating damage speed curve. If you set that curve, then this floating damage speed is not used. It's, it skips that, right? So if you set this to none, then it would use this setting instead. Same here with the text alpha. There's a fade out speed, which controls the fade out. But if you set a curve, it overrides that setting. This 1.5 does nothing. There isn't a setting for scale. So the only way to do scale is with this uh, curve. Here we set the font and we set the color and we have a drop shadow color and we have a drop shadow offset XY. So here it's gonna be one pixel to the right and one pixel down. This outline color is not working yet. It will in the future, but right now that's not working. Yeah, same with this outline font and the damage minimum display time. This is the amount of time that it's going to be on screen. Potentially you could see it for less than that if your alpha curve gets rid of it quick enough, but you'll have to modify this minimum display time and this alpha curve together to make sure that they work nicely together. I'm gonna show you what we had to do here to be able to test this, because again, we don't actually have uh, any system where we can attack anything yet. But if you remember from the past, we, we do have the ability to take falling damage. So all I did temporarily is if we go into our game and we go into the BP player controller, is that I have this add floating damage, and this is currently being called from taking falling damage. And so what I did temporarily is I said, hey, just randomly throw out three floating damage items, right? Just run this three times in a row, and we will randomly decide if it's a crit or not, and we'll randomly decide these uh, locations on screen around the actor, right? And so this is a way to just Temporarily, we'll remove this in the future, but it's a way to temporarily test this system. So now let's go and take a look at what it looks like. So I'm going to switch to the hub world map. And then I'm going to make sure that net mode is set to play as client. And we're going to hit play. So now when I jump, so I've also adjusted it so that it takes falling damage from even the slightest little bit, right? Because otherwise I had to try to find something high to jump off of. And that was that was annoying when trying to test this. So I've made it so that just even the slightest thing takes falling damage. These are not the real numbers of the falling damage you're taking. These are just randomly generated numbers in that play control we we're looking at earlier. Because it's really just trying to get an idea of what this would look like. You will notice that some of the numbers are small and move up quicker. Those are your normal damage. And then you'll notice that there's some big numbers and they kind of you know, really scale out at you. They uh, they actually end up, the small numbers uh, end up at the largest size is 0.75 scale. It's a little bit less than one. 
and the the large numbers from the crit hits there that actually scales all the way up to two and we'll take a look at those curves a little bit later but you can see here there were two crits there's one crit Let's see if we can get it there's three normals right so currently we're not doing anything special to make sure they don't overlap um so sometimes they'll overlap really bad and you won't be able to read them in the future that's probably an improvement that we will take a look at because i think we can do some improvement there although i tried a few games uh, that had text like this and they didn't seem to be trying to do anything to make them not overlap either so um maybe it's okay to have them randomly overlap but i, I think we could come up with an algorithm uh to where we kind of rotate them around so that they're less likely to overlap obviously when you get a lot of different attacks going on at different actors all over the place that might become a lot harder to do but in this case it's just one actor and sometimes they're still overlapping because of course it is just random okay let's go take a look at those curves so if we go back to our hud folder you can see here that i have floating critical damage scale i have floating critical damage speed floating damage alpha floating damage scale and floating damage speed. And so let's first take a look at the scale of normal attacks. You can see here that it starts at 0 0.6, scales up to 0 0.75. I guess it goes a little bit higher, halfway to 0 0.76, and then it just kind of fades out there and stays at 75, right? So it's a little bit of a, a zooming in, a little bit, but probably not that noticeable. That's really not much. But then if we go take a look at the crits, and we look at the curve for that one, it's starting all the way down here at 0 0.5 and going all the way to two very quickly. So it really gives you that, that zoom in type effect. And then it quickly fades back out to a scale of one. So still ends up larger um, than what the normal attacks are at the end of it. And you can see that it's doing that over a time period of zero to one. So the way that this was built is that this is not actually seconds. This, your curves are always gonna be from zero to one and then it will automatically scale to whatever that minimum time was, right? So, so what'll end up happening is that if you're, you said you wanted that to be two seconds, then zero to one here, this is two seconds and one second would be at the 0 0.5 point. If you said that this was one second long, then it, it would match the time, right? I figured that was easier than having to sit there and keep figuring out, okay, what's, how many seconds is this curve? And then the curves wouldn't be reusable. So in this case, uh, they kind of end up being reusable no matter what your time is because it's always getting scaled zero to one of whatever the length of that time is. Let's take a look at floating damage speed. So what this is basically doing is this is the Y value, so the up and down. And as you know, negative means up. So what this thing is doing is saying for the first 0 0.2, so that would be two tenths, of whatever the time length is, just stay in place. But then after two tenths of whatever your time length is, then start moving on a linear angle down to negative 300 pixels. So it's basically gonna start in the spot on the screen, wait for 0 0.2 of whatever the length is, and then start moving up, you know, just until it ends up uh, negative 300 pixels from where it started on the Y axis. Maybe in the future we'll convert and have it so that there could be the concept of a uh, x-axis movement as well. Um, might be interesting if there was some kind of thing where maybe they moved away from the point of it, not just straight up. So there could be some improvements we could make there as well. And finally, we'll look at the floating damage alpha curve. This one is shared for both, and it basically just creates a nice transition of one means that it's fully visible. And then it kind of curves off down to fully hidden. So zero is completely hidden at halfway through here. It's, you know, halfway visible. And then here at one, it's completely visible. And so just kind of nice curve for a fade out. Uh, this one is actually shared between the critical hits and the normal hits. It's the same curve. That's why you won't find a crit alpha. Using some combination of these settings, you should be able to configure it to get the kind of look that you're going for for your game. Let's take a look at the underlying code. So if we go under our UI folder on private and public, you'll see that there's an hwhud h and an hwhud cpp. So if we go look at the h file, we can see here that we're building this floating damage structure. 
This is the real time runtime data for each of the floating damage items that gets added to the array. And then you can see here, if we go to down to protected, you can see floating damage items. So this is the, the floating damage items that get added to this array. And then it basically just loops through and renders those. Here's all of the settings for the HUD. And there's all the settings that are on the per instance. And if we go to the HUD, you'll see that we have add floating damage items. So this is what gets called to initialize it, to write, to add that, that item. So what would happen is that when we inflict damage, uh, which we have an event for that, we would make sure that we call this add floating damage item uh, to add that on the screen uh, for the client. This is not replicated, so no one else is going to see uh, the damage. This is just for the person that did it. And then if we go down here to render floating damage, you can see that we're basically just looping through each one, getting all of the settings, calculating all the positions on the screen, calculating any settings. And then finally at the bottom here, we just use draw text uh, to, to render those out. So we'll render out the drop shadow. This outline's not working currently. And then we render the, the text right here. So that's all we're doing. And then there is also an option here called cleanup floating damage items that we call in tick to just sit there and find any of them that are marked for deletion and remove them. So that's the code that we have currently. We'll improve this over time, add more settings, uh, go back in and implement the healing when we start doing that. But right now the goal is just to get some visual feedback so that next week when we add our uh, test dummies that we can attack that we'll be able to see how much damage we're doing to them with our attacks. And then we can start building out uh, our abilities. If you have any questions related to this video, please leave your questions in the comments section. The Open World Server and Hubworld MMO Discord link is in the video description if you want to discuss something in this video further. Like and subscribe to be notified of future videos and to help with the algorithm. Until next time, have a good one.